to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ but jesus answered him and said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god luke chapter 4 verse number 4. we welcome you today to our study of the gospel of luke Luke is presenting Jesus as the ideal man, and today we're picking up with chapter 4 where we left off last time and thinking more about Jesus and the perfect life that he lived. And so we want to encourage you, if you don't have it handy, locate your Bible, find it in your home, let's get it out as we're going to study God's Word together today. And friend, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by congregations and individual members of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Uh, whether it be on Sunday morning or Sunday night, maybe in Bible class or Wednesday night for Bible study, you will find people there who love God, who are concerned about the Word of God and the souls of men and women today. And we just want to encourage you to check out the Lord's Church in your area. If you'd like to have a Bible study, you'd like to sit down and learn more about the church or salvation, there'll be people there who'd be glad to do that with you. Friend, we also want to help you here at the Gospel of Christ. We're just simply a work, uh, um, an evangelistic work of the Lord's Church, and we want to help men and women to know God and His plan of salvation better. And so if you've got a, a Bible question, you'd like to learn more about salvation, don't hesita hesitate to contact us. You can visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our material that's free to you online. We've got video lessons, audio lessons, transcripts, study questions, written material, a, a good resource of information for your Bible study needs. And if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just log on to our website, fill out a media request form. You can receive that instantly as a digital download, or if you need it in a hard copy on DVD or CD, we'll make that available to you as well. And friend, in our fast-paced world today, we want to encourage you to check out our uh, uh, mobile phone apps, our apps that are available for both iPhone and Android. They're available in the respective stores, and you can download that. And it's a great way to study the Word of God in the fast-paced world that we live in today. Beginning in Luke chapter 4. Jesus is now being tempted by Satan. Kind of the beginning point, one of the beginning points of his ministry at his baptism. And immediately after that, Jesus is taken into the wilderness by Satan. He is there without food. He's uh, with the wild beast, Mark records for us. And that would be a difficult time. And being without food for many days, Satan seizes that opportunity. In essence, he says, I know you claim to be the son of God. If you're the son of God, take these stones right here and prove to me you're the son of God by commanding them to become bread. And here's what Jesus said. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. In the midst of that temptation, when it was a real temptation and Jesus was hungry, Jesus turned Satan's attention and his from the physical onto the spiritual. It's not physical food that's the most important. It's not this world and the lust and the desires of this world that we need to put our emphasis on. Man doesn't survive by bread alone. Yeah, you've got to eat to survive. But if you really want to live spiritually, remember Jesus adds that fourth dimension, the spiritual dimension. If you really want to survive and live, it's got to be based on the Word of God. The Word of God is our true sustenance. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 15, verse 16, Your words were found, and I did eat them, and they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. From a spiritual aspect, Jeremiah was filled with and by the Word of God. And friend, that's how our life is going to be unique. 
That's how we're going to be that ideal person God wants us to be. We've got to consume the Word of God. Job said in Job 23 verse 12, I have not departed from the command of His lips. Your words are more necessary or more important than my necessary food. Friend, when you think about things that are necessary, you've got to eat, you've got to drink. Can't live if you don't have those things. What about the Word of God? You will dry up, wither away, and be nothing without the Word of God being brought into your life regularly, just like food, just like water, just like the physical sustenance we have to have. And so Jesus' words encourage all of us, study to show yourself approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. They encourage all of us to search the Scriptures daily. Acts chapter 17 verse 11. And to put God's Word in our heart that we might not sin against him. Psalm 119 verses 9 through 12. And let me show you why that is so important. Th th this temptation that Jesus endured under the hand of Satan. Satan threw everything he could at him. Jesus was victorious and because he's that powerful, because he's greater than Satan, he was able to defeat him. But I want you to watch Luke chapter 4 and notice what it says about Satan's persistence in verse 13. At the end of this temptation, in Luke chapter 4, the Bible records for us, Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him, notice this, until an opportune time. The devil realized he hadn't been defeated, and he, he moved on, but he didn't forget that he still was going to try. Moved on until an opportune time. Friend, I want to put God's Word in my heart. I want to learn how Jesus overcame temptation because the devil is looking for an opportune time. Whether that be a moment of weakness, whether that be a moment of despair, temptation, sometimes in our greatest joys, I can promise you the devil is looking for a chink in your armor. The devil waiting. He's waiting for an opportune time. And so we need to realize how aggressive and how militant the devil is. Job chapter 1, he is presented as going back and forth, to and fro on the earth, seeking those whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, 8, uh, Job chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. And so the devil is looking, actively seeking and looking for people he can tempt and cause to fall. We want to be on guard at all times, and part of the way we do that is by hiding God's Word in our heart, staying true and steadfast to the Word of God, and not giving the devil a foothold in my life and in yours. In fact, one of the things that Jesus reminds us is we've got to do more than just scratch the surface with our knowledge and study of God's Word, we've got to be willing to launch out into the deeper things. Look in Luke chapter 5 with me. Here's the context of Luke chapter 5. The disciples have been fishing. Jesus calls them. They've not had a lot of luck. And so here's what Jesus says to them in Luke chapter 5 verse 4. When it stopped speaking, He said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. And Simon goes on to say, Master, we've been trying to catch fish all night. We're not having a whole lot of luck, but if you tell me to, we'll go out in the deep and let our let our nets down again. They did that. And of course, you remember the story. The nets were, they were so full of fish, they were about to break. But I want you to think about that phraseology. Launch out your nets. Cast out into the deep. Uh, the Bible will teach us to break up our fallow ground. Hosea chapter 10, verse number 12. Sometimes you've got to do more than just scratch the surface. You've got to dig a little deeper. You've got to launch out into the deep. You've got to strive a little harder. You've got to have the fortitude not to give up and to keep trying and to persevere and keep casting out your net, in essence. Launch out into the deep. A Christian has to be more than just a babe in Christ all his life. Oh, there's nothing wrong with being a babe in Christ, but you've got to have a determination to grow. 2 Peter 3 verse 18 says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. What do you mean? Initially, 
as newborn babes. Desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. First Peter 2 verse 2. But you have to reach a point where you no longer need the milk. You're ready to go on to solid food. Hebrews chapter 5 verses 12 through 14. And you want to grow and, and get to a point where you can teach and develop and that you're no longer living in that infantile state as a child of God. You're launching out into the deep to deeper things, Hebrews chapter 6, not just the elementary principles, but deeper things that will help us to grow and mature and be what God wants us to be as a child of God. And then, friend, I'm reminded of such a powerful teaching of Jesus about what His mission was and why He came into the world. You see, the the Pharisees, they wanted to chide Jesus. They wanted to look down on Jesus because He didn't want to rub elbows with them and what they viewed as the religious elite of their day. He was out teaching the common person. He was out teaching the tax collector and the sinner and those who were caught up in uh, problems. And so they're chiding Jesus. And listen to what Jesus says about His mission in Luke chapter 5. Notice these words in Luke chapter 5, verse 31 and 32. Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I want you to think about the, the logic, the irony, almost the humor of what Jesus is saying here. Think about it this way with me. Let's say tomorrow you wake up, your feet hit the floor out of bed, and you think to yourself, man, I feel great today. Your next phrase or your next thought is not going to be, I'm going to call the doctor and go see him. <laughs> if you feel good and you don't have any problems, you don't think, I'll go call the doctor and just sit down and have a good visit with him since I'm feeling so well. Jesus said, those who are well have no need of a physician. Why would you want me, if you think you're where you need to be spiritually, talking to these Pharisees, why do you need me? I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Luke 19, 10. Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus did not come to hobnob with the religious elite. Jesus did not come to give some long theological discourse in some uh, seminary in the Jewish day to people who had studied it all their life and thought they were what they needed to be already. They weren't what they needed to be. The Pharisees weren't, but they thought they were. There was no place for Jesus to teach and to instruct them. Jesus came to call those who realized their sinful state. What about us today? Are we the Pharisees or are we the tax collector? Meaning this, do we think we're everything we need to be spiritually, that we've got it all figured out, or do we realize I'm lost and I need Jesus' help? I'll give you a classic example. Luke 18, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and one a publican. The Pharisee prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men immoral, ungodly, adulterers, whatever he had to say there. Uh, I give, I fast, I do all these things. Thank you that you didn't make me bad like everybody, or like these other people. And then the publican, he wouldn't even as much uh, approach the temple in essence, but he beat his breast, looked up in heaven and said, God be merciful to me, a sinner. One man thought he was right, thought God needed to be thanking him for everything he'd done, and was really glad he wasn't as bad as everybody else. The other man was honest and he said, God, I know I've messed up. I know I've sinned. I'm not what I need to be. I need your help. Which type are we? Do we think we've got it all figured out? We're, we're, we're everything religiously that we need to be, that we have arrived spiritually speaking and God should be glad we're on his team? Or do we realize how much we desperately need Jesus because of our own sin and filth? The Bible teaches all have sinned, Romans 3.23. The Bible teaches there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible teaches my sin and yours is like filthy rags, Isaiah 64, verse 6. And the Bible teaches, and you, when you've done everything commanded, you say, I'm an unprofitable servant, I've only done that 
which is my duty to do. Friend, I need to have the heart and the attitude, not of the tax, not of the, the Pharisee and the scribe and the religious, the chief priest of Jesus' day. I need to realize I'm like that tax collector. I'm like that publican. I am a sinner in need of God's grace and mercy, and I need to be thankful for God every day of my life. That's what we learn in Luke chapter 5, verse 31 and 32, about the mission and the ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, in Luke chapter 6, Jesus now begins to shift gears a little in His ministry, and He begins to remind people about why He came, and not just why He came, but who He's looking for, who He's trying to reach out to. And some of these people needed to realize that it wasn't the praise of men. It was the praise of God they needed to hear. Listen to Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Jesus said, Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so they did, so did their fathers to the prophets. You know, when I think about some of the prophets, especially the false prophets in the Old Testament, men really spoke, some of those prophets, their message wasn't from God, uh, like Hananiah, but the people really liked that. In the days of Jeremiah, you've got and Micaiah, you've got these prophets who will pretty much prophesy smooth things. Jeremiah 5, 31 and 32, and everybody liked that, but it wasn't the will of God. To followers of Jesus, he said, be careful when everybody speaks well of you. Friend, I'm not saying that you've got to go around and live your life in such a way that people talk negatively about you. That's not the idea. But when you live right and you do right and you follow the will of God, that's not going to make everybody happy. To those who are not Christians, to those who are living immoral, to those who are opposed to the teaching of Jesus and the Bible, they're not necessarily going to speak well of Christians and Christianity. And so what we need to value is, what does God think about me? What does the Bible say? My other's opinion, I, I want to have a good reputation by the way I live my life, but ultimately I want to know, am I pleasing to the Lord? Then in Luke chapter 6, Jesus reminds us in verse 38 of our need to be a giving person. Look at this beautiful passage. In Luke chapter 6, look at verse number 38 with me. To his followers, Jesus said, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Friend, this is not the idea of a health and wealth gospel, meaning if I give $100, God's going to give me $1,000. That, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being a giving person, giving of yourself, giving of your time, giving of your talent, giving of your abilities, and yes, at times giving financially as well. But if I give, it will be given back to me. Good. Here's the illustration. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You know, if you take a bucket and you fill it up with whatever, let's say you take a bucket and you're picking blueberries and you fill that up with blueberries. You can fill that up to a certain level and you can maybe push it down a little more. You can shake it and you're going to get a little more in there. And you can finally add a little more. If we're willing to give ourselves in the cause of God, and the cause of Christ, spiritually speaking, what you get is so much more than what you give. If I give myself and I remain faithful to God all the days of my life and I give my time, my talents, my money, my energy, my intellect, whatever, on that final day to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Friend, everything I gave won't even seem like a drop in the bucket to what I'm getting because of that. Am I in it for what I'm going to get out? I'm in it because of what Jesus did for me. I'm in it because of the love of God. I want to serve God because of who He is. I'm not in it for the benefits, although we're all reminded of what a joy that is to be a child of God. And so you'll never find a life that has more joy, hope, peace, and ultimately the reward of heaven than the Christian life. Give, and friend, it will be given back to you. But you know, not everybody does that. Jesus was reminded of people who were in it for what they could get out of it and who wanted the praise of men more than the praise of God. And to those people, Jesus said this in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? and do not do the things which I say. 
Sadly, in Jesus' day, there were some people who were acknowledging Him as Master, who were calling Him Lord, which means Master, Owner, One who's over me. They were saying to Jesus, we recognize Your Lordship. We recognize You as the Master, the One who is over all. And Jesus said, really? Why do you, why then, if you call me Lord, Lord, do you not do the things which I say? Do you see the, the logic there of Jesus? Do you see the logical inconsistency? Here are people who are saying, Jesus, you're Lord, then they're not doing what he says. If Jesus is Lord, meaning he's the one who's over, he's the master, he's the owner, then logically, if he's the Lord, You've got to do what he says to call him Lord. You can't call Jesus Lord and not obey him. That's just pretty simple logic, right? What about today? If I acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God, if I say Jesus is Lord, if I realize he's the Messiah, he's the Savior of the world, does that require anything of me? You know, it isn't enough. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. Is it, it isn't enough to put a, a bumper sticker on your car that says, Honk if you love Jesus. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But friend, if you put a bumper sticker on your car that says, Honk if you love Jesus, your life better match that. And by that I mean, if you say you love Jesus, Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you love me, what? Keep my commandments. Not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, Matthew 7, 21. It isn't enough to have a feeling. It isn't enough to verbally say Jesus is Lord. Jesus said, if you say that, your life has to match it. And these people's didn't. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? And so the encouragement is, yes, let's call Jesus Lord because he is, but let's live that. Let's not just say that. Let's live that. Anybody can say that. Living it, living it in your life. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's, where it's real, that's what real Christianity is all about. And friend, when I think about some people who maybe realized that but didn't back it up by their actions, I can't help but think about some in Luke chapter 7, verse 29 and 30, who weren't following through on some of the things Jesus said to do. Look at Luke chapter 7. Here's an example of that in Luke chapter 7, verses 29 and 30. The Bible says, after some of Jesus' teaching, some of the things He's done, some of His healing, the Bible says, and when all the people heard Him, even the tax collectors justified God, having been baptized with the baptism of John. Now watch verse 30. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the will of God for themselves, not having been baptized. Some of these people had seen the miracles. They knew what Jesus did. They knew the way he lived and what he taught was from God. But by not doing what Jesus said, that was an out-and-out -out rejection of God. They rejected the will of God for themselves by not following through and obeying God in baptism. John preached, uh, a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Jesus taught one must be baptized to be saved, Mark 16, 16. A person can say all day, I believe in Jesus, but if I won't follow that up with action in my life that Jesus commands, like these people, that means nothing. Friend, there's a lot of folks today who maybe because of misinformation, maybe they have been not been taught correctly, will say, yes, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus, but they've never done what Jesus said. Jesus said in John 3, verse 5, Unless a man is born of water in the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Oh no, baptism's not essential to salvation. Really? Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Sound like it's essential to me. Mark 16, 16. Unless a man is born of water in the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You're not getting God's kingdom if you don't do what Jesus said, which means being born of water and the Spirit. Saul was told, Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Acts 22, 16. Galatians 3, 27, Paul said, For as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into His death. We're clothed with Christ. Romans 6, verses 1 through 4. And so a lot of folks have the idea, they like the idea 
of Jesus as Lord. But when it gets down to brass tacks, when it really gets down to doing what God said, do we reject God's will sometimes by not doing that? And friend, we mean that in kindness and love. Maybe you've just never been taught what, what you must do to be saved. If you already believe in Jesus, friend, the Bible teaches, Jesus teaches, you've got to repent. Luke 13, verse 3. Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. If you already believe in Jesus and you're willing to repent, you've got to make the good confession. Jesus said, if you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before the Father who is in heaven, Matthew 10, 32. And if you're willing to believe and repent and confess, don't reject God's will by not being baptized. Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, 16. If you've never done that, we encourage you to do that today. Uh, friend, we hope you'll join us next time as we study more about the Gospel of Luke, where Jesus is the ideal person sent from God to save. To destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of Christ, to proclaim good news unto the poor, and the broken heart and new life, and for those who mourn, heaven's child is born. This for a variety of resources, visit us at thegospelofchrist.com. We are also available on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon and all of the app stores. Have you downloaded our app? You can find it on Apple and Google stores for free. This is the gospel of Christ, and to God be the glory, and to God be the glory. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.